In this video, we're going to talk about how do we convert a linear system of equations into what's called an augmented matrix, and then how do we simplify that using row reduction. All right, so I want to begin by just writing a definition for what a linear equation in n variables looks like. So in general, if I have a linear equation, it's going to look something like a1 times x1 plus a2 times x2 plus dot 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 plus a n times x n. So I'll have that on one side, and on the other side I'll, I may have some number b. Okay, so let me explain what all of these pieces are. So there are a bunch of variables in this. So the variables are the x i's. So x1 is a variable, x2 is a variable, x n is a variable. Those are the variables, all of the x's. All of the other terms in this equation are constants. So a1 is a constant, and a2, and if there was another one, a3 is a constant, all the way up until a n. Those are all constants. Sometimes they're called coefficients of the variables. And the b over here, this is also another constant. Constant just means it's a number. It's already sort of determined what that is. Okay, so a linear equation in general looks like this, if there's n variables. Okay, so now I want to write down what a general linear system of equations looks like. So that will have not only one equation like this, maybe there are like two equations or five equations. So I'm going to be the most general possible. I'm going to say that there are m equations and there are n variables. So I'm just going to abbreviate variables, V-A-R-S. Okay. So the first equation, I'll just write it as a11 x1, so x1 is my variable, plus a12, so a12 is a constant, times x2, plus dot dot dot, plus a1n xn. And this is going to be equal to some number, which I'll call b1. Okay, so you might be wondering how come in some of these subscripts I have two numbers, like a1, a sub 1, 1, and a sub 1, 2. The reason for that is I'm going to have a bunch of equations here and I need a way to differentiate which row I'm in and which column I'm in. And that's why I have two entries in some of these subscripts. So for example, with the next equation, because this is my second equation, for the first entry that I write in the subscript, I'm going to call it 2. So I'll call this a sub 2, 1, x1. So the 2 sort of corresponds to which row I'm in, which equation I'm in. So the next value would be a2, 2, two times x2, plus dot dot dot, plus until I get to a sub 2n times x sub n. And this is going to be equal to maybe some other number, which I'll call b sub 2. Okay, and I, I can keep going down until I finally get to equation number m. And if I'm in equation number m, the first thing in the subscript should be m, because I'm in equation m, or row m. So this should be a sub m1 times x1 plus a sub m2 times x2 plus dot 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 plus a sub m comma n x n. And this is going to be equal to some other number, uh, which I'll call b m, because this is equation m right here. All right. So in general, if I have a linear system of equations, It'll look something like this. Here I have m equations and n variables, n unknowns. Okay, so we are ready to define what an augmented matrix is. So if I have this system, the augmented matrix for this system of linear equations looks like, so anytime I write a matrix, I put like a bracket around all of the entries in it. So I have a bracket, I'll have another bracket. So the numbers that get written inside of this matrix are the coefficients in all of these equations. So the first equation, what well, my first coefficient is a sub 1, 1, and then it's a sub 1, 2, dot, 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 until I get to a sub 1, comma, n. Okay, and then what I do is I put what I call the augmented bar, and on the right-hand side of that bar, I put the number that was on the right-hand side of that equation, so b1. So notice that all I'm doing is I'm copying down all of the sort of constants that showed up in that first equation, none of the variables. 
So if I do the same thing for the second equation, I would write down a sub 2 comma 1, and then a sub 2 comma 2, dot dot dot, until I get to a sub 2 comma n. And then on the right hand side of the augmented bar, I have b sub 2. And I keep going like that, dot dot dot, down, until I get to equation, the last equation, which is a sub m comma 1, a sub m comma 2, dot dot dot, until I get to a sub m n. Um, and then on the right hand side of the augmented bar, we would have b sub m. Okay, so this whole thing is what's called the augmented matrix. So this is called an augmented matrix. Okay, so a matrix is what's called, or uh, it's a rectangular array. So a matrix is a rectangular rectangular, ooh, rect let's write that better, rectangular array of numbers. So it's rectangular, this sort of looks like a rectangle, and then the things that are in this are numbers. Okay, so there's also a bit of terminology that we have for the stuff that appears just on the left-hand side of the augmented bar. So the stuff on the left-hand side of the augmented bar, that is sometimes called the coefficient matrix. So that's something called, called the coefficient matrix. And that's denoted, I'm going to denote that as A, because I've called each of these constants like A sub something. So I'm going to call that coefficient matrix A. So what we want to do next is we want to find a general system to, sorry, a general solution to a linear system of equations. So our strategy is we're going to try to combine the equations to eliminate some of the variables. In the context of our matrix, what that will mean is we're going to try to combine the rows of the matrix because the rows correspond to the equations. And we'll do that in a way that lets us eliminate the variables. Okay, so it's helpful to list the like all of the legal ways that we have to combine equations or the rows of the matrix. So these are called row operations. So the first thing that I can do to an equation is I can scale. That's another way of saying multiply. I can multiply a row. So remember, a row is the same thing as an equation by a non-zero number. So whenever I have an equation, I can multiply both sides by the same number. That's a legal thing I'm allowed to do to an equation. So another thing that I can do to rows in my matrix, aka to the equations that I have in my system, is I can add or subtract a multiple of one row to another row, to another row. And we saw that in the previous video, although we did it just with equations rather than with a matrix, but now we're going to start to do it with the matrices. And the last thing that I can do, the last row operation is, we can interchange two rows. We can interchange two rows. Two rows slash equations. So let's take a look at well, what, what, what does this look like in terms of the examples that we looked at, looked at in the last video. In, in, with those systems of equations. So the first example was we had these equations x minus y equals negative 2 and 3x minus 6y equals negative 15. So what would this look like as an augmented matrix? So I'll put my brackets for my matrix. Okay, and then I'll put the coefficients on the first line. And let me put my augmented bar. So for the first equation, the coefficients are, so this is 1x minus 1y technically. So I would write 1 and negative 1. Those are the coefficients. On the right-hand side, we have the number negative 2. With the second equation, the coefficients are 3, negative 6, and then the number on the other side of the equation is negative 15. So that's what my system would look like as an augmented matrix. And then I could, I could use row operations to simplify this. So the thing that we did to these two equations was we multiplied the first equation by negative 3. And then we added it to the second equation. And then we replaced the second equation with that. 
Okay, so if I do that here, I'm going to get a new augmented matrix, slightly different, where the first row I'm keeping the same. 1, negative 1, negative 2. But with the second equation, I'm going to perform this operation. I'm going to multiply the first row by negative 3 and add it to row number 2. So if we do that, multiplying the 1 by negative 3, that makes it negative 3. Add it to the 3 makes that a 0. If I multiply negative 1 by negative 3, I'll get positive 3. Positive 3 added to negative 6 is negative 3. If I multiply the negative 2 by negative 3, I get positive 6. Positive 6 added to negative 15, that's negative 9. Okay, and we've seen that when we did this without a matrix, we ended up with the same type of thing. It's just, you know, writing the matrix lets us not have to write all the variables every single time. So it gives us a more succinct way to write down our, our steps, which is why we use matrices. Okay, and from here, I could finish this up in the same sort of way. I could now translate both of these back into equations. So the first row corresponds to the equation 1 times x1. Or sorry, we we're calling it x. 1 times x minus 1 times y equals negative 2. And the second equation now is negative 3 times y equals negative 9. And we could solve these in the same way that we did in the last video. Okay, so let's do the same thing for our other example that we looked at. So for the other example, okay, so... So writing down the matrix for it. So the first equation here, the coefficients are going to be 1, negative 2, 4. And then I have my augmented bar. On the other side of that, we have 1. For the second equation, the, uh, the coefficients are 1, 1, and 7. On the other side of the augmented bar, we put the 3. All right. The way we simplified that in the last video was we just subtracted the two equations. We did the second row minus the first row. And I'm going to replace that with the second, or sorry, I'm going to replace the second row with that. So this arrow sort of signifies, when I do this, when I subtract the two rows, where am I going to insert that? So we're going to insert this into row number two. So because I'm inserting the row number two, the first row stays the same, one, negative two, four, augmented with one. And then when we subtract the two rows and put that in row number two, I'll get zero, 3, I'll get 0, 3, 3, 2. So in the next section, we're going, we'll start to see that using these augmented matrices to solve a system of linear equations is going to be more efficient in general, particularly when we have more variables and more equations.